one. I'm sorry, but what mother takes their children to a park, leaves them unattended to go walk in a forest, all alone, uh... all alone? She is dangerous. Her main point was, I'm staying on the internet. You can't run me off. Imagine what someone with a huge following is making off of those platforms. She made it so that like, if you don't support her, if you say a word against her, you don't support domestic violence victims. She's fucking lying and she's manipulating. I can't imagine that having three kids is something that she was ever that built for. Social media rots some people's brains. Did you guys see that influencer who left her three kids in a park to go take selfies in the woods? And while she was gone, her toddler climbed on top of her van and her daughter with disabilities was left on a blanket by the road. Acacia Kersey walked off to the woods and left her three children completely alone and apart. One of Acacia Kersey's children is disabled and shouldn't even be left alone for extended periods of time. In the video, the children looked uncared for. After being alone for a period of time, the youngest child began climbing on the roof of her car, which was filmed by the parents of the park and the police were promptly called. Acacia Kersey was once seen as a victim who was mistreated by the internet, the men she dated, even her own family. But now, Acacia has become the villain, mistreating and neglecting her own children. This video is the story of how Acacia has become the villain and why Acacia should not be able to continue to get away with it. Hello friends and internet acquaintances, welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel covering controversial internet figures. If you like those types of videos, then don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. And also thank you so much to Brittany Christine and Irene Kaya for speaking with me in this video. I wanna give them a huge shout out for being vulnerable and sharing their story with me. And they're two individuals who have inspired me so, so much through this experience. My name is Irene Kaya. My mom was not allowed to know about it. For him to have you sign a contract where you're not allowed to have a boyfriend is so controlling and weird. So currently you're in the midst of an ongoing lawsuit with Richard Clark. What has this lawsuit experience been like for you? This lawsuit experience has been really long. I also want to say in this video, I'm very much aware that I do not say Jairus, Jairus correctly at all. I know how to say this man's name, I just cannot say it. I'm aware of how you're supposed to say his name, but for some reason I cannot say his name. So I, I'm, I'm sorry for that. I'm really trying in this video. Now the last video I posted was about how Acacia hid the dark secrets of her family and how Acacia's traumatic past may have influenced who she became today. But in today's video, we're talking about the villain inside the victim and asking the question, when do you draw the line of excuse using people's actions and when do people's past stop becoming an excuse of who they are today? When is it that someone is the villain of their own story? And in my opinion, I think Acacia has reached that point with her recent actions and I felt a responsibility to make this video and clarify that point. Because when you put your own children in harm's way, there are no more excuses. You're done. And you should not be able to continue to profit and create this perfect branded image off of something that's a complete lie. So that's what this video is about today. I also wanna give a mental health update before we get into this video for those that are concerned. I've mentioned it in Instagram posts and in the pinned comment of my last video, but for those that have been concerned and have missed those comments and have just seen the effects of grief and what it's kind of done to me because it's a hard thing to hide, I think. On October 3rd, I lost my younger brother who I loved really dearly. 
and was so close with, and a lot of this grieving process has been really hard. For those who have lost someone close to them and have been through this process, I'm sure you guys understand it's a whirlwind, it's a fever dream, it still doesn't feel real. What my younger brother and I went through in our childhood is such a big reason as to why I make the video content that I make and why I do for a living what I do. And um, he was really the only person who understood the childhood that we had and what we went through. And, um, and he was just such a special person. I've been trying to not let grief completely consume me and I've been trying my hardest to still be there for my family and my child and for everyone here because I don't want to just disappear into my grief but I know that a lot of you guys are concerned for me and so I just wanted to say that I'm doing my best that I possibly can to heal and I just want to thank everybody right now for all the love and support that you've shown me in the last few weeks. Now, if you've seen my last video, you'd know that I avoided diving too deep into the topic of whether or not Acacia neglects her children, and I tried to give Acacia the benefit of the doubt, the reason being because I would hate to accuse the mother of a disabled child of neglecting her child if it wasn't true because there's already so much stigma around mothers of disabled children. That being said, after recent events and everything that's transpired, Acacia does not get that benefit of the doubt from me anymore. So we're diving deep into all of the allegations of child neglect, no holding back. And how, from what's been posted publicly, it seems that Acacia has favored her able-bodied children over her disabled child and has refused proper care of her disabled child or the proper support for Rosie's needs. Acacia as a mother, warning here for child abuse and neglect. I obviously do have so much empathy for her, especially having lived with her and seen everything that I saw, but it's like knowing her villain origin story just doesn't excuse recent actions in any way, shape or form. But it's just, it is really hard to connect those two thoughts in my brain because yeah. I'll, I'll be upset with her after something she did that was awful and then, you know, I'll kind of go through it like, what, how did we get here? And then I'll start to feel bad again, even though she put herself in these situations. It's hard. It's really tough. You're kind of rooting for her. And then it's like, no, I was rooting for you. That Tyra Banks meme, we were all rooting for you. Yeah. When Acacia had her first child, Brinley, and rebranded to her family vlogger image, people all seemed to believe she was a great mom. Acacia presented a perfectly curated image of a great mother posting to Instagram the best photo ops of her looking after her daughter Brinley. It seemed like Acacia was really stepping into the role of a mother and truly identifying with it. Then, one year after Brinley was born, Acacia gave birth to her daughter Rosemary. And once Rosemary was born, fans began to see issues with Acacia's parenting. So we call this baby the forgotten baby. <laughs> Rosemary, who people call Rosie, was born with Algeal syndrome. Algeal syndrome can cause heart problems as well, which Rosie has had. Pretty early on into Rosie's life, it became apparent that Acacia had a favoritism towards Brinley over Rosie. J. Roos, Brinley, and a doll. Acacia also said that Rosie, an infant, preferred to keep her nails long, which is why she never cut Rosie's nails, which if you know anything about a baby, oftentimes, especially at a very young age, they'll scratch their face. Acacia has been accused quite often of not dressing Rosie appropriately for the weather, even when Brinley's dressed appropriately. Like in this photo, where Brinley has a long coat on and warm boots, but Rosie is just wearing socks. Or this photo, where it's a cold day in October, and even though Rosie's wearing a beanie, she doesn't have a coat on. And even though I will probably be blurring out Rosie's face in this photo, you can see that her nose is red, which is often a sign of a child being cold. Of course, I can understand one or two times making a mistake and forgetting a jacket. It happens. We're all human and make mistakes, but to consistently make that mistake with with just one child is certainly suspicious. When fans noticed that Rosie never had any 
Jimmy socks, Acacia commented that there was no point in putting socks on Rosie because she just rips them off anyways. In a video, Acacia even said that she just shaves Rosie's hair when it gets too crazy to maintain. Rosie's hair was getting a little crazy, <laughs> so we shaved it off. There it is. Rosie had cradle cap for a long time and instead of trying to really do anything about it or trying to get rid of it, Acacia decided to try to shave her head. Have one child whose hair is always brushed and well kept and another child whose hair you just shave off instead of having to bother with it? That is definitely questionable. And it brings up the question of Acacia's view on disabilities. Just because Acacia's daughter is disabled doesn't mean she no longer gets to have a cute hairstyle or the life that her abled body sister has. Acacia and Peyton have always been so lazy. Like just my personal experience with them, they are very lazy people. So I can't imagine that um, Acacia was motivated to keep up with these small issues like maintaining hair, frequent baths, cutting nails on time. I can't imagine that having three kids is something that she was ever that built for, especially a child with special needs. And that's just my opinion. I'm a mother to a disabled child and there is a learning curve with becoming a parent. And then there's a major learning curve with becoming the mother to a disabled child. I never expected Acacia to immediately jump in and know exactly what to do with a child that has a one in a billion condition, especially with a heart condition, that's so tough. I have so much empathy for her there. In 2020, Acacia announced that Rosie would be receiving open heart surgery. Before her hospital stay, Rosie was only 11 pounds at one and a half years old, warning that this image may be shocking. This was Rosie pre-hospital stay. And after being in the hospital, Rosie went up to a healthy weight for a girl her age. Because Rosie was going in for surgery, there is a possibility that Rosie being severely underweight pre-surgery was due to the condition she was going in for surgery for. Because I'm not a doctor or expert on Rosie's condition, it makes it much harder to speak towards in any confident manner, especially because there's different levels of severity to Algiers syndrome as well as corpus callosum agenesis, which Rosie allegedly has as well. This, to be honest, can also work in Acacia's favor because any delays in development that Rosie has that could be attributed to severe neglect could also also be something attributed to Rosie's conditions. And anyone that doesn't have specific access to Rosie's medical records or knows the ins and outs of Rosie's condition cannot say one way or the other. It's truly impossible to say what's causing these delays. This is just, in my opinion, it's just speculation. It's just me having experience with her and knowing her and her personality. I personally think that Rosie's condition became an excuse for Acacia to be lazy. Had this kind of perpetual baby allowed her to not have to do all these things that come with motherhood, like being proactive about her special needs. If she can just let Rosie sit there and lie there and exist, and that's all Rosie really needs to survive, then I think that's probably something that she was happy to do. There's no denying that 11 pounds at one and a half years old is severely underweight. And after Rosie's surgery, while she was staying at the hospital under the care of doctors and not Acacia and Jay Roos's care, Rosie was able to rapidly gain the weight she needed up to a healthy weight. And then after the open heart surgery, Acacia decides to bring the family camping. Daughter just gets out of the hospital for open heart surgery and they go camping. Her incisions aren't even healed yet and they're going camping. Shortly after the surgery, the family went on a trip to the mountains. This trip was during COVID too. So you have an infant who just had open heart surgery, who's immune compromised, traveling again without a coat. Check out this photo. Okay, so the last time I covered this, I included a TikTok where Acacia talked about how they took Rosie and their family to the mountains after she had open heart surgery because she was fully cleared by her doctors and able to 
to do this. And they wanted her to be in nature because they were all cooped up. But this photo does it for me. Because what? What are you actually thinking? Again, Acacia gets no more benefit of the doubt from me when it comes to motherhood. And also just good judgment. Because I look at this photo and I see an infant with a feeding tube. Yes, that, that is an infant with a feeding tube, which is a serious medical device, which Acacia and Jerus are newly accustomed to using. And then I see their other daughter in a very heavy duty coat, not rosy again. So she's underdressed, which indicates that this is very cold weather that they are in, which further indicates that this is not conditions that a one and a half year old who just had open heart surgery should be in. Not a doctor, but that's just my opinion. But still, this photo changes the context of everything. It wasn't a fun little camping trip after open heart surgery. Your daughter is in a heavy duty coat and Rosie has a feeding tube. Again, Rosie is the forgotten child. So what do you expect? Take them home. But clearly Rosie has been through a lot worse because Acacia has left Rosie laying in the sand alone before or left Rosie laying by herself many, many times. The forgotten baby, who it seems time and time again is all too easily forgotten about in your household. I'm getting matching stuffed animals for Rosie and Bryn, but I'm not wrapping hers or anything. So basically, I'm just getting stuff for Bryn. There's also multiple photos of Rosie and just a basic stroller, when for her disability, it seems like she's supposed to have a supported stroller. There was a Reddit post from a special needs mom talking about how long and difficult it can be to obtain a medical stroller, which can be even more difficult if you don't have medical insurance. According to this poster, one stroller with insurance can cost over $5,000. But there are also a lot of supportive special needs Facebook groups with innovative ideas on how to work around this problem. For example, this mom stuffed towels and blankets in a baby trend wagon for her son to make it more supportive until they were able to to obtain a medical stroller. Another Redditor even claimed that Acacia and Jerus did have medical insurance and even showed their medical cards once. And with all the sponsorships and ad revenue from her family vlogging rolling in, that Acacia had all the money at her disposal to be able to get Rosie a medical stroller. And that Rosie has never been seen in any special needs equipment besides the one feeding tube from the hospital. On top of that, early childhood intervention is usually free with state insurance. But if you don't have state insurance, it goes off of income. So the lower the income, the lower the cost. So she could have had physical therapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy for a fairly low cost. I have an acquaintance. So this is secondhand information. I want to make it very clear that this was not my experience. I don't know. But I have a secondhand account from someone who was very close to her during the period where she was in her family vlogging and she only had Rosie and Brinley, as someone with a disabled child, my child has high support needs on spectrum. He was in 20 hours a week of different types of therapy, of speech and occupational therapy and behavioral therapy. This was before he was in school, so this kind of like was acting as does now. It was tough, it was draining, but it was also necessary because early intervention is so necessary. And from this secondhand account that I have, that was not happening. There was no assistance for Rosie in those ways. And I do think that that is neglectful. I think that is a type of neglect. Again, there's been very little medical equipment for Rosie, and it seems that there's been very little therapy for Rosie. And that in itself, to me, feels neglectful. It, it's devastating that Rosie didn't get that. Yeah. yeah, and we have no idea where she would be if she had, and that's just the unfortunate thing. She's almost recreating the upbringing and trauma that her parents caused her. Acacia grew up unattended, ill-mannered, irresponsible, and had no idea of what consequences are. Any parent is entitled to their me time, but when you sign up to be a parent, a parent of three nonetheless, you are both responsible for taking care of that child, providing for them, teaching them right from wrong, and ensuring they feel loved loved and safe are the basics for a solid foundation. The trauma that's been inflicted onto Acacia from her family, Acacia has continued to inflict onto her own children. And guess what? According to the Child Welfare Information Gateway, there's an intergenerational cycle of child abuse and neglect 
Though, of course, not all children who are abused and neglected go on to abuse and neglect their kids. So what are the contributing factors that lead to abuse and neglect? According to Children's Wisconsin, the following are characteristics of some of the people who abuse children. Low self-esteem, poor control over their emotions, a history of being abused themselves, stress, financial problems, social isolation, relationship problems with a partner, lack of parenting skills, is abusing drugs or alcohol, inability to cope with life stressors, focused on own troubles or things other than their children, possible child contributing factors, some children have certain characteristics or behaviors that make it likely that they will be at risk for abuse or neglect. However, it's important to remember that no matter what characteristics a child has or how they act, a child is never responsible for being abused or neglected. An illness, especially chronic illness, disability, crying for extended periods of time, feeding problems, physical appearance, for example, resembling someone who is viewed negatively by the caregiver. And according to this study titled Intergenerational Effects of Childhood Maltreatment, a systemic review of the parenting practices of adult survivors of child abuse, neglect, and violence, parents who experienced a neglectful or abusive childhood at home are unfortunately at an increased risk for neglecting their own children. Though, of course, that does not mean that everyone who experienced abuse in their childhood is going to continue the pattern. In 2021, Acacia left the internet after being exposed for running a preset scam and stealing from a small business and other creator. And Acacia returned to the internet in 2022, announcing her divorce with J. Roos and that she was dealing with the aftermath of J. Roos's substance abuse problems. I want to be very respectful of somebody that um, is a big part of my life and I want to be respectful to what they're going through. But what I can say and what I can share is that uh, me and the kids are okay and take care of ourselves or myself the best that I can um, so that I can be the best mom I can be and uh, a lot of changes happening a lot of new things are happening and it's quite scary but I will let everybody know when I'm ready to talk about it. She also announced that she was not going to be posting her children on the internet anymore, which at first I believed was a sign of growth, an attempt from Acacia to start her healing journey through no longer profiting from exploiting her children on the internet, especially through a sensitive time like going through a divorce. I thought that not posting her children online meant that Acacia was going to try to heal, but it turns out that Acacia's version of healing is flying off to California, hundreds of miles away from where her children are frequently, dating young boys, and not only not posting her children, but acting like her children no longer exist, like she wanted her children to completely go away, as if her divorce meant she no longer was a mother anymore either. If you don't see anything about my kids, that means I'm doing a f terrific job. I love hearing that. I love it. That means you don't get an ounce, you don't get a sliver, you don't even get to see the tiniest, littlest part because I don't want you to. So, that means I'm winning. We all just think it's kind of wild how you don't see car seats in her car. There's not like a toy in the background. There's just no evidence of her children yeah. oftentimes. And it, it honestly, it, we all kind of wonder if she has custody, how much she's actually seeing them. We have no idea. I can't erase the evidence that I'm a mother, even though my child is also not my content. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't post my child on the internet and lots of parents have chosen not to post their children on the internet. It's one thing not to post your child and it's something completely different to pretend online like you're no longer a mother when literally everyone knows that you are one. Now, this in itself wouldn't even necessarily be that big of a deal. It did raise a lot of red flags for a lot of people. It was one of those weird but 
okay kind of moments. It had felt as if Acacia was trying to completely be rid herself of the motherhood identity she had once clung to so heavily online. She had gone from this family vlogger image where her children were in every single photo, every post, every sponsorship, where her profits and brand was tied together with her children. And it was a respectable move for her to untie herself from that. To now, she was acting online as if she was not a mother whatsoever, as if she had disassociated from this idea that she ever was one. For the people that had been following her for years and years, the cognitive dissonance was alarming. The only thing she posted about online was dating and wanting to date and young boys. Acacia's posting Instagram stories like these. Hey look, a poison sandwich. I'ma eat it. I want this so bad, I'm gonna scream. She's just living in complete denial that she's a divorced mother of three. I think she wants to relive the someone grooming her days because that's the only way she knows how to fall in love. And there was this sort of heavy resentment seeping through her content about the fact that she even had children. Acacia posted a TikTok video stitching someone who said, say it with me, life is hard, but at least I don't have a baby with my ex. And Acacia said, but I can't say that. Life is hard, but at least I don't have a baby with my ex. I can't. I can't say that with you. I, I can't say that with you. <laughs> Seemingly complaining about the fact that she had children with her ex. Wow, tell us you hate your kids even more. Please, dig the hole deeper. Your kids are gonna see this all when they grow up. Don't forget that. We get it, you wish you didn't have kids. God, I hope someone else is taking care of them and actually showing them they're loved and wanted. And while Acacia was going through a period of trying to find herself post-divorce, Jerus was dealing with addiction, quit music, and began selling couches on Facebook Marketplace. And Jerus somehow sold a lot of couches. Um, how did Jerus find this many couches to be able to sell on Facebook Marketplace? Couch surfing? More like couch commerce, surfing the marketplace swells. Of course, there's nothing wrong with selling couches on Facebook Marketplace. Jerus has just done some problematic things, so I felt the need to clown on him a little bit. Acacia's chaotic story has been summed up eloquently by Snoopy Stories in a post on Medium and on Reddit that inspired part of this video title, titled Acacia Brinley, Villain or Victim, The Downfall of the Original Tumblr Girl, in which Snoopy Stories says, Acacia Brinley is a hard figure for me to understand. Considering her family dynamic, especially her father, and the fact that she had unrestricted internet access at a young age could not have been good for her. Time and time again, Acacia is shown to have no sense of personal identity, rather changing her identity with what's popular or what her boyfriends want. She was pregnant and married to a grown man by the time she was 18. Her history of self and her inability to take criticism shows her to be a fragile person. However, this does not excuse her of any of her behavior. In conclusion, she's both a villain and a victim. The internet as a whole was willing to look past some of these red flags. The pattern of neglect and cycles of abuse that Acacia received from her own family and then inflicted downwards. The never-ending cycles of neglect we often see in our own families that cause us so much pain and suffering. Until the video in the park surfaced, there was no more hiding, no more excuses, and no more denying the villainous role Acacia played in perpetuating these cycles of abuse and neglect. People have been saying for years that Acacia neglected her children. To be honest, it was hard for me to believe that a mother doesn't care about her children, but I was wrong. It goes to show that if a lot of people are saying something, you need to at least look into it heavily and listen to them. I'm still in shock, to be honest, 
this is bad, bad. You've got a two-year-old on the roof, a disabled girl by the road, and there are other people there too, confused. Like, what the F, Acacia? I don't understand why she couldn't have taken them on a hike instead of to the park if she wanted to be in nature so bad. I'm going to make a confident assumption and say this is not the first time this has happened. The fact that she's confident to leave her toddlers, one who has a disability, alone in a public park without fear of them running off or getting taken, tells me that she has trained them to stay put or has conditioned the older one to watch over her younger siblings so that she can gallivant around without them. Well, would you look at that? Acacia Brinley being a terrible person once again leaving this baby next to the street. And this is Acacia coming out of the forest by herself where she went to go take pictures of herself while leaving her children out and alone. What mother takes their children to a park, leaves them unattended to go walk in a forest that is yards away from where her children are? She has Rosie in the sun alone. Having heart issues and being on meds can cause issues in the sun for an extended period of time. And you can see Rosie still has a bald spot on the back of her head from just being left lying there. At four years old, that's absolutely unacceptable, disability or not. This video was initially filmed by a mother at the park where Acacia left her children and was posted by a friend of the mother on the Eugene subreddit. This is what the post said. Is this the new norm for Gen Z moms? My friend was at a park playing with her kids and she sent me a snap of some kid climbing on top of a van while his mom had walked off into the woods and left her three kids alone. She felt so bad for the kids since I guess the mama just laid on a blanket the whole time, taking selfies and ignoring her kids calling her to come play. Is this what our society is coming to? I'm just appalled. She said the kids looked dirty and the little boy had a full diaper with no pants on. I guess when the mom left and walked off into the woods, she didn't say a word to any of the kids and left her baby on the blanket, which was close to the road. Rosie is still so underdeveloped that this poster and the friend thought that Rosie was a baby. That's when the little boy climbed on top of the van and the oldest little girl ran into the woods to get her mom. After the mom ripped the little boy off of the roof, roughly, she went straight back to being on her phone ignoring the kids. Has anyone else witnessed shit like this? Makes me think Jen Alpha is screwed. According to the poster, the person filming never originally intended to film the children. They were just a normal parent at the park filming their own children playing on the merry-go-round when they noticed a mother, now known to be Acacia, walked off into the woods and didn't come back for five to ten minutes. Rosie was alone on a blanket by the road the entire time, and the two-year-old, Callie, began to open the van and climb inside, making his way to the roof of the car. Parents in the park began to panic, fearing that Acacia was not coming back and fearing for the safety of the children. That's when the parent began to film the children to document the incident. Online sleuths noticed that Acacia had posted a photo onto her Instagram story of her playing on her Nintendo Switch in a forest that looked identical to the one at the park at the same time that the park incident allegedly took place. Which, if that was the case, would mean that Acacia walked into the forest to play on her Nintendo Switch and take photos of it for her Instagram story. In a video that her child was climbing on top of the car and her disabled child was unattended on a blanket next to the road, it was July 9th. And on July 9th, Acacia posted this photo of her in the woods on her Switch July 9th. I fully understand mothers needing to step away for a moment to regulate themselves and process emotions. When that needs to happen, you need to ensure that your children are in a safe environment and not left unattended in a public space. The original poster also noted that at the park, a husband noticed that Acacia had the brand new Nintendo Switch in her hand at the time that she was walking to get her son off the top of the car. Someone filmed a walkthrough of this park to show just how far away Forest is from the playground. And in this walkthrough, you can see how similar the forest looks to the Nintendo Instagram story post.
screenshot of a video my friend took of her and her friend's kids playing and that woman's kids were in it, only sharing to show how dirty they were. No shoes, dirty clothes, and their poor hair looked matted. They came like that, so not like they rolled around in dirt at the park. It's so sad now that we know the backstory. She was taking selfies when the little boy fell off the merry-go-round. My friend remembers this clearly because when the little boy fell, both she and the little girl went to check on him. She asked where his mom was and both of them pointed at her. She said something like, maybe your mom can come over and bring you a band-aid. The boy's knee was scraped but not bleeding. The little girl said something like, it's okay, she won't. Now looking back, it sounds like she often neglects her kids' needs. Everyone was completely appalled by this situation. This felt like something completely inexcusable. The backlash against Acacia was mounting, people leaving hate on Acacia's TikTok selfie videos. I don't think you quite understand how badly you effed up this time. Multiple people have called CPS, as they should. Stop taking narcissistic videos of yourself and watch your GD kids. CPS. Horrible mother instincts to leave your kids alone like that. Sorry, excuse. There was no possible way that Acacia could ignore the backlash anymore. She had to address it. First, Acacia posted onto her Instagram story a post that read, Trigger warning, DA. I'm not really here to explain or convince anyone where I've been mentally for the past six or so months, but I know that staying completely quiet doesn't work either. I've been dealing with ongoing DA due to addiction for years now. I thought that after my separation, it would have died down or go away completely, but has since only gotten worse. And as for content creation, I will be slowing down for a little bit while I get back on my feet, but I will never stop creating and trying to spread joy. I'm here to stay. I um, absolutely believe that I believe that she's been going through this. Do I think that it could possibly excuse what happened that day at the park? No. I don't think so. There is just no excuse for what happened that day. There's no excuse for Callie having the time to get on top of a car where the door was open and it again is right next to a street. There's no excuse for Brinley having to run and try to find her mom to get help. There's no excuse for leaving a child with disabilities that has mobility issues on a blanket by themselves. I'm sorry, I, as much as I do have empathy for whatever is happening behind the scenes, I just don't think that there is any excuse for what happened. Now, I want to say, of course, no one needs to be open about DA, a or incredibly hard personal aspects of their personal life, especially when children are involved. Now, and only now, Acacia is suddenly opening up about her struggles when it is convenient for her to open up about being a victim of DA, domestic abuse, which to me feels like an outlet and a way to deflect any accountability for a thing that was filmed and documented in which she walked away from her children and put them in the line of danger. And I believe two things can be true at once. Your husband can be not the greatest of dudes going through possibly putting you in a DA situation, but that also does not mean that you did not neglect your children at a park, which people are understandably outraged and very upset about, but most importantly, extremely concerned for your children about. And you just gave them an extra reason to be concerned for your children. Acacia also posted a TikTok series explaining her side. And at first, to be as honest as possible, I felt a lot of empathy listening to Acacia explain her side of things. I saw Acacia crying in a video and explaining that she was dealing with a domestic violence situation. And I just couldn't imagine as a mother going through a situation like that. But then I had to pause and analyze the videos because things were not adding up. I want to clarify that I believe Acacia's story, but simultaneously, I feel like these videos are only attempts at covering up the situation and manipulating her audience to feel bad for her. Just like I initially did so that Acacia can remain on the internet and continue to profit off of her following, waiting for people to forget about this most recent controversy. So let me break down why I think these videos are BS. 
Starting with this first frame of her explanation video, that face at the beginning says enough. Who does that while explaining that? I mean, I get making a video and feeling nervous and kind of making faces. I'm an overly expressive person, so who am I to say? But vibes are off. Let's just say that. Acacia claimed in the video that during that week when the park incident happened, she was going through domestic abuse and had been continuing to ask for help, but that nobody was giving it to her and that she was in an unsafe environment and that nobody was listening. Uh, and I had been continuing to ask for help from people close to me. I had asked for help from people in my life over and over. Um, nobody was helping. I was doing it all alone and I had said that so many times that I was in an unsafe environment and nobody was listening. So if what you were saying is true, knowing you're in a particularly unsafe environment, experiencing one of the worst weeks of DA, you took your children to a park and you walked off into the forest, leaving your children alone in that park while claiming that your ex-partner, the father of those children, is unsafe and that the environment in your family life is unsafe. If anything, to me, that makes this neglect even worse because violence and abuse against kids Kidnapping against kids is even more likely to be committed by another parent. Children who witness abuse, that is also a case of child abuse as well. So it puts us in a very sensitive situation, especially if they're being abandoned or neglected in public places. As someone who was a child who was in a domestically abused household. My mother was absolutely a victim and it's been hard for me to like come to terms with my head because obviously I empathize with her and I love her, but ultimately she made her children victims too. And like that just really sucks. And it, it sucks to see that potentially now happening in Acacia's situation. I don't think that she is handling this very well. And it sucks that you have to adjust so quickly to dealing with your own trauma but you do have to figure it out a little bit faster when there are children involved. And children who witness domestic abuse are at risk of both short and long-term physical and mental health problems. So you are not the only one experiencing this, Acacia. Your children are as well, and it will have long-lasting impacts on them, especially if you abandon them when they need you the most. Acacia then claimed in her TikTok video that she went to the forest to cry about her DA situation, again, with no awareness that this is affecting her kids too, and that she started walking back when she saw Callie on top of the car. In her part two on her TikTok explanation series, Acacia claimed that she needed to step away to the forest because she had cried so much in front of her children recently. I knew that I needed to step away because I have cried in front of my children so often recently that like I've started to like pull back from doing that. And so I step away because I could not hold it together anymore and I was not going to cry in front of the whole park nor in front of my kids. Even just Acacia claiming that she had cried so much in front of her children is a major red flag to me. Because of course, seeing your mother cry is traumatic. Though I would say it's better than your mother completely walking off and abandoning you. Don't get me wrong. Of course, it's all hard. Divorcing at a young age is hard. Going through a possible DA situation is extremely hard. But do you think these young children ever asked for any of this? As much as I can empathize with being a mother and not having the support that you need in tough times. And as much as I want to give her the benefit of the doubt in the situation, I just don't think that I can. I just don't think that there is any excuse for leaving three children under the age of six, one which has mobility issues, right next to a street in a park when you are not within walking distance of them. Like if you cannot get to your child in five seconds, you're too far. And five seconds might, might be even too much of a stretch. I think that when, you know, in her response video, she said that she was like in the tree line. So in that video, I had stepped away, had a, a, a little cry at the edge of the tree line where I could see all three of my children. 
I don't think that's true. Um, because we see in that video women looking for her. And if she was right there in the tree line, like, wouldn't they have seen her? She's very tall. The girl's 5'10". She's hard to miss. I understand that if she really, truly was so overwhelmed and so upset that day, if she was just literally having a bad day, like, that sucks. That's terrible. Don't take your three kids to the park. Stay home. The positive is Acacia claimed that after this incident, she got connected with a social worker who also connected her with a navigator, and she relocated to a better living situation that removed her from an unsafe environment. Since that video, which is about four weeks old, I knew I could no longer rely on the people close to me. And so I have reached out for help through other avenues. I am working closely with a social worker, Department of Human Services, if you don't know what DHS is, it's basically like CPS, but um, I've been working very closely with her to um, get help. And she has been the most supportive person of my life recently and has changed my life with help with support groups and getting set up with a navigator, which if you don't know what a navigator is, they are basically the, or a patient navigator. I don't, you can look, you can Google that and f figure out more about them, but they basically just help you figure shit out. I have removed myself and I'm now more in a safe environment because of her and um, I'm doing so much better, even though it's so much harder. And I am gonna keep going. And then Acacia posts a TikTok that really pisses me off, to be honest. In the third part of Acacia's explanation video series, Acacia not only continues to talk about herself, instead of giving any clarification on whether or not her children are okay and how they are doing, but Acacia also clarifies that she is not going anywhere and will continue to post on the internet, which to me, again, in my opinion, solidifies Acacia's intentions with this entire explanation series. Acacia wanted to put something out that could at least win over enough of her audience's sympathy that she could continue posting and wouldn't have to leave the internet. I have a lot going on right now, like I mentioned. I have a lot of things I want to cross off my list before I keep creating, but creating is something that brings me joy and has always brought me joy. And so I have no plans on letting anybody tell me where I can and can't be. And the internet is a place for everybody and it is a place for me. And so I will continue to be here. And I feel good about that decision, so. All I'm hearing is me, me, me. I don't think that you can deny her pattern of not taking accountability. In my own experience with her, you call her out for something and she just will immediately deflect with a new accusation to you. Instead of focusing on the thing, on the topic at hand, it's a deflection. I think that we saw an example of that in her sit down explanation video about why her children were alone in a park. She did not take accountability one time when those were her actions. And if they were motivated by a behind the scenes, that does make it a tougher conversation to have. But at the end of the day, those were still her actions. That was her decision. It was her decision to take the kids to the park. It was her decision to walk away. It was on her. So it's just like, it's disappointing to me to see another example of her not taking accountability. Brittany also posted about this situation on TikTok and had what I think is an extremely valid take. I woke up to several different people sending me a Twitter thread that regards the parenting of someone that I used to know. In the case of this mother, Maybe she felt overwhelmed. I don't know what the situation was. Maybe she was feeling overwhelmed and felt the need to walk away. Absolutely times that the right thing to do when you're overwhelmed is to walk away. But it is the right thing to do when your children are safe, when they are in their room or their crib, somewhere that you know that they are, that they cannot hurt themselves or hurt you, and you can take a moment to yourself. It is not safe or appropriate to walk away when this can f***ing happen at a public park. If you're feeling overwhelmed, there are definitely better environments where you can bring your children to, where if you step away, less dangerous things are likely to happen. Going to a park and walking to the edge of the forest is not the way to do that. In the comment section of Brittany's video, Brogan Burnside, Acacia's old best friend, someone who's friends with Acacia for years and even at Acacia's wedding, commented on Brittany's TikTok saying, you left out the part 
that the mom was said to be taking selfies in a forest long enough for the two-year-old child to climb on top of a minivan. Rogan also confirmed that she does not talk to Acacia anymore in an Instagram Q&A. Do you talk to blank? No, and I was very distraught by the recent events. Brittany also had a very valid take in response to Acacia's claims that she's not leaving the internet, talking about how much money Acacia is likely making on these platforms and that that is likely Acacia's main motivator for not leaving the internet. The internet is a place for everybody and it is a place for me. And so I will continue to be here. This is dangerous. She is dangerous. She has proven time and time again that she knows how to manipulate hundreds of thousands of people. She hops on camera and she cries and she blames someone else. And then everyone fawns over her. And then she wipes her tears with your fucking money. Everyone always asks like, how can she afford to do this? How can she afford to do that? I made 300 bucks on TikTok last month. I have probably a fraction of her OF followers. And I make like easily like a grand a month off that. It was definitely not a coincidence that like one of her main points was I'm staying on the internet you can't run me off here because she cannot afford to be run off the internet. If that's what I make off of those platforms, imagine what someone with a huge following is making off of those platforms. Made it so that like, if you don't support her, if you say a word against her, you don't support domestic violence victims. I'm a victim of domestic violence. My two best friends are victims of domestic violence. I know so many women because it's so unfortunately common and like, that's none of them would use that as an excuse for neglect. Acacia is a victim because just like we say there is no perfect victim, there is also no perfect villain, which makes it hard for empathetic people and people pleasers because oftentimes manipulative people will play on your heartstrings and make you want to see the good in them or all the ways in which they have been victimized. We all have been victimized in some way, but what matters at the end of the day is that we don't continue this cycle and victimize the most vulnerable members of our population, or else that also makes us the villain. That is also what makes Acacia the villain, even if she was also once the victim. Even though Acacia is claiming that she's experiencing domestic abuse and that social workers are involved in her family situation, Acacia continues to post online like everything is normal, completely unfazed, which is the strangest thing of all. It seems to be a completely self-absorbed reality. If there was ever a time to leave the internet and take care of your family, now would be the time. But Acacia has seemed completely unfazed by everything going on, like she could not be bothered apart from her explanation video. Why do you think that Acacia continues to post onto social media even when she claims that such serious and dire problems are going on in her life. And why is it that Acacia cannot seemingly exist without social media and internet fame? I think that there are two reasons that Acacia is still online, even though she, generally speaking, has a very negative audience. And I don't think that it's just her claim that she wants to spread joy with her car selfie content. I think that she is absolutely addicted to the feedback loop. I don't think that she knows how to survive without it. Also, I think that she does not know how to make money off the internet. It seems that Acacia has acted unfazed, trying to move on from the leaked video of the park incident as quickly as possible so that Acacia doesn't have to stop making money online from social media. Recently, Acacia deleted all of her explanation videos in the park. The exact reason why she did this is unknown, but I believe it's probably so she can try to erase what happened in hopes that people will eventually completely forget about it. It. Besides vague posts from Acacia about the status of her children, it's unknown where her children are, what their health is like, what the social worker involvement and CPS status is, and yet right after Acacia's TikTok explanation videos, a Redditor spotted Acacia at a concert, believed to be the May Day Parade in California, hundreds of miles away from her children, after she claimed domestic abuse was taking place. Spotted. 
I went to a concert tonight and saw our girl getting kicked out of the photo pit for not being a photographer. So why has Acacia been so insistent on staying on the internet, even though everyday commenters remind her of how neglectful she's so obviously being towards her children? Well, she's clearly making money off of social media. As Brittany mentioned, through OF and TikTok. People ask a lot how she's able to afford these frequent flights to LA. She's in LA like two weeks out of the month. Sometimes just from what I've witnessed and our circles, I'm in LA too. They overlap a little bit. So I know like a little bit behind the scenes and she's here all the time. People are like, how does she afford this with no job and yada yada. And I'm just like, I don't think you understand how much money this girl is potentially making from either the TikTok creator fund or the creativity beta program. So I absolutely do think that it's money and it's attention. And I think those are her two primary focuses. Linked on Acacia's Instagram, in a linked tree is only one link where you can pay for Acacia's extra special photos and videos. And in my opinion, that is why she is so very insistent on staying on social media. It would be one thing if I genuinely believed that Acacia was using her OF to support her family and I don't know, like buy medical equipment for her disabled child and put her children's needs first. But I personally do not believe this is the case. And to think, Months ago, I ended the video that I made with this hope that Acacia not posting her children online was going to mean she was actually changing as a person. Really, her coming back online was a strategy to see how she could make more money. And now she does not want to leave because she doesn't want to sacrifice any more money-making opportunities. Growth is really the theme here. Acacia's online aesthetic has constantly evolved over time, but that's that evolution has never seemed to reflect much inner growth as a person. Instead, all it's shown is a need to deflect from accountability and change. In this near decade of me being quiet about my experiences with Acacia, that was because I did not want to make her beholden to my view of her as a 16 year old because children change, you grow. I witnessed her being a selfish, entitled teen and now I'm watching her be a selfish, entitled adult and I don't think that that change happened, unfortunately. Also, just recently, Acacia has started dating a new grunge boy who lives in LA and is in a band, which is believed to be also another reason why she changed her aesthetic. This person posted an Instagram story with Acacia dancing and looking happy at one of his concerts. <laughs> just when she found a man, she also began to publicly take up an interest in appearing to care for her children. And look, I understand going through a messy divorce, messing up as a parent and making mistakes, maybe even being a parent and trying to make up for it and coming back and trying again. Stuff happens. When you truly care about your children, you do deserve to be a presence in their lives. But you know what you don't deserve? You don't deserve to use your children as props in your life to fulfill your selfish desires. Whether that's to get a man, to make money off of social media, to have the perfect brand and image. You don't get to use your children to make you yourself look better. For months, Acacia acted like her children didn't exist. There was virtually no sign of them until the park video surfaced, where they were clearly not being treated well. Then all of a sudden, Acacia started posting Instagram stories talking about taking her children to school and picking them up. She's so calculated. She spent months not showing a trace of her children. No toys in the background, no car seats, neglect allegations come out and boom, we see toys in the background and she's talking about them. Acacia also posted a performative video where you can hear her pressing the record button and telling her children, all right, we're going on an adventure. What do we say? All right, everybody, we're going on an adventure. What do we say? Adventure. I would maybe think this was cute if I didn't know everything we know now. Acacia also posted a video explanation about why she's going to be posting her kids more now. 
Also, the reason that I just shared something non-intimate about my life with my kiddos is because I wanted for so long to keep any information about them and motherhood for me off the internet, especially during this sensitive time for me, where when I am in like mom mode with my kiddos, I'm doing it all on my own without a support system, without family, without a babysitter, without any help at all. It's just me and them. And so I'm like very defensive and very like sensitive when it comes to that stuff. And so I didn't want anyone to have any room to talk about me as a mother and like what's going on right now. Um, but clearly people already do that. So might as well share some non-intimate, non-personal, non like secretive things that are happy and positive that are going on. Acacia, I call bullshit. People were not speculating about your treatment of your children for no reason. Even with the accusations of your treatment of Rosie, time and time again, I gave you the benefit of the doubt. And I respected that you wanted to keep your children offline. Then, out of the blue, people who don't even know you and didn't even know that you had an online platform posted about you neglecting your children and putting them in a harm's way. Now, in my opinion, you aren't posting your children for any other reason than your own selfish needs to try and use them as a way to clean up your image so you can continue to manipulate people on social media, change your brand aesthetic and image, and victimize yourself. Now, by saying you're a single mother doing it all, thereby using your children to victimize yourself, using them as props to build a social media brand that will build up a new revenue stream for yourself and new defenders who are proud of you for doing it all. I see what you're doing after seeing the pattern and how you've been doing it for years. We would all kind of hope that after this park incident with her three children, that maybe that was a um, wake up call for her and that maybe she would take a break online and start to like look inward and start to really analyze why that happened, how that happened, how she let that happen. It's just very upsetting and disappointing to me because like the one point of credit that I did and could give Acacia was that she kept her children offline and away from her. Hmm. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> More and more, there have been parents online who audiences have been able to spot as red flags, and yet they continue to exist and make profit as influencers while their children are suffering from poor treatment. This needs to stop. When we see bad behavior from parents online, we should stop interacting with them or putting up with this behavior. They don't deserve a platform period, because their children are suffering off of them profiting. Of course, I wish for Acacia to grow and to heal, but unfortunately, through Acacia's actions, I no longer have the patience to give her the benefit of the doubt or to hope for any growth from her, at least over wanting the well-being of her children. What do you hope for Acacia, Acacia's family, and her children's future? I think whether you love or hate Acacia, I think that you have to agree that it is in both her and her family's best interest to be offline. I don't think that Acacia will ever be able to heal in this just perpetual feedback loop that she's created of her being on the internet. I don't think she'll ever be able to focus inward on herself and on her family as long as she's this focused outward. I think that the best thing that you can do is stop engaging. I think that the only way to move forward from this is for her to be deplatformed. And I think the only way to do that is to stop engaging with her. So whether or not you're commenting to like criticize her or you're viewing her videos for like the gossip of it all. This is not gossip anymore. This is serious. This isn't just an influencer who's like being crazy online. This is children in danger. The information is there that it's accessible. Stop engaging. I think it's the best thing that any of us can do. The information needed to be spread and needed to be shared. I understand people being outraged and, and wanting to comment and wanting to let her know on her page, on her TikToks, like, hey, we're mad, we're angry, we're outraged. At this point, she has posted so much continually on her TikToks that it is clear she does not care. She sees those comments and she does not care. It's clear that those comments don't work. They, to, to get her offline, to get her to stop posting, to get her to see the light, the clarity, that method isn't working. And uh, the only one that does is not engaging with her anymore.
I don't know the inner personal lives of Acacia and her family, but I am concerned for Acacia's children and feel there are serious red flags about the family situation that should not be shared online and that Acacia should not be profiting from. If you saw my first part about the story of Acacia and the horrific truth about Richard Clark, Acacia's father, then you know about Irene Kaya. My name is Irene Kaya. My Instagram is Irene Kaya. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. And her harrowing story about her interactions with Richard Clark. I met him around 2015 when I was 16, 15, 16. I booked him for a headshot photo shoot for my acting agency. Oh, have you ever been a model? And I'm like, no. It was just like, oh, take off your clothes. And I kept taking off more and more. It resorted to me being fully and then I found out he was selling my photos online as a minor and he just wouldn't take them down and I wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend. He didn't really want me to have any friends either so he kind of separated me from everyone else and my mom was not allowed to know about it. For him to have you sign a contract where you're not allowed to have a boyfriend is so controlling and weird. That in itself just puts this like whole dynamic in place of him just like immediately wanting to control who you're dating, wanting to control your life. Oh yeah, he was trying to isolate me for sure. In hindsight, I do see it now. In the moment, I was like, he's trying to protect me. He told me he's my surrogate father. He's trying to be a dad. But no, he just wanted to isolate me from everyone. What do you think his end goal was? Um, I feel like it's an ego thing. Some men, they just want to feel and control and dominate someone, especially people younger than them and people that are vulnerable like me. You know, just losing a father, he saw I was the person perfect opportunity for him. But then I recently spoke to a human trafficking worker and she told me that his behavior was similar to a lot of human traffickers. They would own them and then the same things he would do to me, isolate, and they would just end up my interview with Brittany, Brittany even provided brief information that Irene was undergoing a lawsuit with Richard Clark because he had groomed her when she was underage. Well, I reached out to Irene Kaya to get confirmation of this and was able to do an interview with her to speak about this lawsuit. And this is what Irene had to say. In your video, you mentioned going to the police to try and get justice for what happened to you. Brittany mentioned that there's been other government agencies that you've been in contact with. In general, what have your experiences been like going to government agencies to try and get justice? With the police, it's been really bad. I went to the cops of Simi Valley. I'm saying that so all the girls know to never go there. The same detective that worked on my case with Rich Clark um, worked on my case and with the Rich Clark case, it ended up with him saying you weren't using a vibrator in your pictures. Same thing kind of happened with the Rich case. He just, you know, dropped it based off of dumb shit, even though the Rich admitted it. That's been my experience going to um, authorities with government agencies, they kind of came to me and they instructed me not to really speak on it, but with them, it's been good. I don't know what they're exactly doing right now. They don't really tell me much, but I know they're trying to look for him. So many victims often feel like the odds are stacked against them. What's been able to keep you going and what advice would you give to other victims who are looking to pursue justice? To be honest, I've always loved to push myself to do things that make me uncomfortable. And this story was something even my mom doesn't know. Like I never wanted to tell anyone. I don't want to be known as a girl who got groomed. That's the last thing I really want to be known as. So it was definitely really hard, but I don't regret it at all. I knew it was the right thing to do. and I I knew if I didn't say something, he would be doing it to other women and other young girls. Just thinking about it in that sense, I wouldn't want my daughter to go through that, you know? So that made me speak out. To people who are deciding whether they want to go for it or not, I would say do what's comfortable for you because some people speaking up just gives them way too much anxiety. Like they would rather let it go. And I support that too, because it's your own story, your own experience. You do what you want. If you want to speak out, I encourage you to because your gut tells you what's right and what you should do as a person. And for me, that was just to speak out. So currently you're in the midst of an ongoing lawsuit with Richard Clark. What has this lawsuit experience been like for you? This lawsuit experience has been really long. To be honest, it's a lot of times of me repeating the story over and over again. And every time I repeat it, I get traumatized and PTSD. So it's emotionally intense, but I know at the end it'll be worth it. And even if it doesn't go my way, at least it sends a message to him. Hey, there's people that are willing to speak out. So maybe stop what you're 
you're doing. I guess at the end of the day, I feel better with myself knowing I did the right thing. Well, not just for me, but for other people as well. So that keeps me going. And also having some friends around you that you can tell and go to. For me, it's Brittany. When everything is over, what does justice look like for you? Just as long as he's not doing whatever he did to me to other women, other girls, then I'll be happy. I just want him to stop what he's doing and to pay for what he's done. Whether that's time in jail, whatever, he needs to learn his lesson mentally and physically. That's not okay to do to someone, so. Thank you so much to Irene for speaking with me about such a vulnerable topic. I can't imagine how hard it is to relive such a traumatic experience over and over again, but I think it's so important to talk about these types of things for victims who've gone through very similar experiences to know what possibly their options could be. Thank you so much to everyone who made it this far into this journey of Acacia and how she became the villain that she is today. At the end, all I'm feeling is that Acacia should not be allowed to have the platform that she has. She's shown time and time again that she doesn't deserve it anymore, especially when she puts her children in danger. If you made it this far, please comment your support to Irene and to Brittany, who are just such incredible people, and I appreciate them so much for being a part of this series. If you have any video suggestions that you'd like to see in the next upload, please comment them down below. And also thank you to my team for all their work that they put into this video. I hope you all are doing well, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!